Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here. Today, we're going to be taking a look back at a wash to do with what Candice Cooley has been talking about for quite some time now in regards to tracks, which are either Dylan's tracks or similar to Dylan's tracks. I guess it depends how you interpret it, right, and what Candice Cooley is saying at that moment, okay? We've actually got video footage of it, so I'm going to play it in today's video. You can see it for yourself. Maybe it's something that has been brushed over because it was in the past. So we'll take a look at it, analyse if necessary, give my thoughts and opinions, and if it's possible somehow, maybe even go on the maps to try and map it out and see where it is actually located, right? Now, if you remember in the last video, I said something about maybe it will make more sense when we get into this video to do with like locations and where one should or could be searching, right? It probably will make more sense when we get into it today. As we do go along, make sure to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the chat on the right hand side as, you know, we just go along and talk about a range of other things in between. Once again, Kathy Waters popping on in last night, so it just goes to show that although she may detest me, she still pops in, so... There you go, shout out to Kathy Waters there. I did hear Kathy Waters' voice randomly once, not in my head. It was in um, a video elsewhere, and they've got a southern accent, so that's really good to know. Anyway, um, we can check the comments out of the last video. There's just a couple there, get through them, allow people to join on in. I know not everyone joins on time, and just go from there. Is there any other bits and bobs we need to add on in? Not that I know of at this moment in time. I see the Shack Lady did do a live stream recently. Um, at this moment, and speaking, it's still visible. Maybe it'll pri be privatised at some point. I was a little confused because I don't know what accent the Shack Lady was trying to put on. I don't know if she was trying to sound like some German or Russian scientist, psychologist. Or she's doing a Wicked Witch voice. I don't know. Might be a combination. But, I mean, I guess it's promising that you've got some other people out there putting on different accents besides me. Hmm, interesting. We'll see what happens next. Um, in general, Dylan Rounds case, still ongoing. Still some videos to upload and Kenny Veach stuff. The Kenny Veach stuff probably will be quite fragmented in terms of the lengths. There's like lots of tiny bits and bobs that need to be uploaded. And, um, you know, in the Dylan Rounds format, you probably all cram it all into one video or something to so extend it. And um, Kenny Veach case is different. Key focus points on very specific areas require individual videos, regardless of the length of them. So that's a heads up for you. Probably still set them as a live premiere format. Why not? And see where things go from there. You could say that quite a few Kenny Veach viewers external people out there not the regulars but people out there lightweights in terms of keeping up with information definitely but it is what it is just one of those things once again so let's return back to the dylan rounds previous video i did i will provide a link down below in the pinned comment section if you wish to click the link to watch the video make sure to watch it after watching this one let's head on over to the comments right now so here are the comments we're currently on top that's just the way dale prefers it that's what Kathy Walters' parents said. But yeah, we need to arrange it to newest comments as we normally do. At the bottom, we've got Tom Evans saying, I'm sorry that you turned into my message service. Don't worry, I'm Postman Pat with a black cat which runs around with a tuxedo on, so it's fine. Pat C. Rainwater, I can't get the chat back up. See, this, this is the thing. Um, when stuff like that happens, try refreshing your browser, your tab. Okay, if that doesn't work, close the tab down open it back up, load on YouTube and get the video playing, okay? Um, there was actually a time where I was almost locked out of my own live video premiere, decided to lag out for about 10 minutes so I couldn't watch one of my masterpieces. That really pissed me off, that. Don't know why, stupid technology. Trying to screw me over. We've got Spectator. After you did your polls, I found an exclusive video of Kathy attacking Graham out on the streets. That sounds quite rough, that. It was breaking news, right? Now, I did watch the video myself, and it was quite shocking, right? And Kathy Waters, 
moving very, very fast and gliding by. You don't want to get on the wrong side of her. Now, can't play the video just simply because of copyright reasons, but if you want to check this breaking news footage out, you'll have to check my previous video out. I said, link down below in the pinned comment section. Okay. Got Cleo there. Cleo saying, your hair looks good long, by the way. Keep, I just keep forgetting, but it needs to be cut because with it getting into summer, it's going to get very warm and very uncomfortable. I think Badger said she prefers it longer. Yeah, that's what they all say, man. So it's easier to pull on. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Dawn Marie, a newish viewer, I believe. Shout out to them. Dawn says, Lance is not qualified to have any dog. How can they subject a defenseless animal to volunteer for something Lance knows absolutely nothing about? This really bothers me and his animal that he had to beg for the money to be able to even consider a dog. He can't afford to feed his kids. He's going to feed and train a dog. Anyways, I included some criteria for you to read if you're interested. I was, what, that comment, yeah. Uh, okay. There's that. Was that it for the comments? Wow. World record reading through the comments. Beam. So now, I think mean, it's just simply time to move on to the main part of this video. Just as a bit of a backstory so we don't jump in in the deep end. Basically, um, we're going to go on a Find Dylan Rounds Facebook post by Candice Cooley in the past to do a wash and track marks found. We'll read the caption by Candice Cooley, analyse if needed, then play the video and see where we are from there. Okay. Here is the Facebook post and it was posted 8th of June 2022. So very early on in the Dylan Rounds case. Now, I don't think I was around at this time. I believe I started covering the case 1st of July or around about then. So when looking back at this stuff, it will be new to me might take me some time to understand. Let me know your thoughts as we go along, okay? Is there anything significant about 8th of June? Um, Not that I can think of on the spot. If we're talking about the 1st and 2nd of June, that's to do with the gun key fob being returned back on those days, back to back. And as well, on the 2nd of June, the spring cleaning by Brenner at the Grain Shed property. After that date, don't remember much else happening. After the 8th of June, the 10th and the 11th, that's when Brenner was like apprehended by police, but then released the next day. And you got to fast forward to June 16th to about June 18th, when Brenner was finally taken away and the phone was found on June 18th. Okay, Dylan's at Lewis in Pond. So that's a little quick on-the-spot timeline of how things played out. Obviously, there'll probably still be days in between here and there which are a bit patchy and, you know, unknown of, if that makes sense. Um, like the 29th of May, that's still a little bit right, confusing as to what really happened on that day. And then maybe some of the days early June. But that aside, let's just focus on the 8th of June with what Candice Cooley had to say at the time. Candice Cooley says, We have been receiving many questions asking if we have specific locations that we would like to have Elko search and rescue to search. The answer is yes. We have been asked by Elko Sheriff's Department to send all the locations that we have searched. But those locations are in Utah and will be of little help to Elko Search and Rescue. I assume because Elko Search and Rescue are away from that area. The video below is taken from helicopters on Sunday, June the 5th. Thank you, York, of a wash in the Montello area. There were tyre tracks that are remarkably similar to the tyre treads on Dylan's pickup. These tracks are clearly visible in the wash on the video and were clearly made after the rain, possibly Sunday. Please remember that the pickup had been pressure washed when found parked at the farm. The wash was searched on the Utah side, but not the Nevada side. We do need to get search dogs out there as the sides of the wash slough off with the slightest movement, 
from the top and could easily hide large objects. If someone has a connection that can help us get cadaver dogs to the area to search, it would be greatly appreciated. We are more than happy to pay for the services of the dog handlers. This is what we are asking for from the Elko County Sheriff's Office. We have been told they are having meetings, but that does not help with the search effort or finding Dylan. Okay, bit of a mouthful to read out, but okay, fair enough. So this is in the early days where Candy's Cool and the family were desperate for help, but like for other people coming on in to, you know, assess, maybe volunteer, right? Now, a portion here mentioned kind of reminds me of some other thing I read to do with Lance Kelly and helping out with cadaver dogs. And more think about it now, it's what he said himself when he was responding back to Candice Cooley in a video maybe a few months ago. And I covered it in, in mine as well. That's very interesting. It'll make more sense in a second. So is there anything I need to read over once again? The bit where it says the video. So the video is down here. We will play it. Don't worry. Um, is there any comments? No, there doesn't seem to be any comments. It's weird how the comments are turned off on the Find Dylan Brown's Facebook page, but not like immediately. Seems to happen like a day or two after whenever something is posted. I don't know why. Maybe it's probably to stop people causing trouble, jumping on him. But yeah, this footage of the wash was from Sunday, June the 5th. Okay. Now, June the 5th, I believe it was June the 4th when Heavy D came down to do a video. And again, maybe it was June the 5th. Maybe it ties in with Heavy D in a helicopter because he did do a flyby. But I think one thing to acknowledge is, I think it might have been quintessential in a comment, did say that it wasn't... Um, it wasn't Heavy D, the one that got a hold of the footage of the wash and track marks. People were getting mixed up. It was actually another guy, another person. And it seems to be a person called York. Don't know who York is, but they've been um, helping out in the early days from the looks of it. Helicopters. So you're saying that there was more than one in the area hovering about. I mean, to be fair, helicopters and drones are probably some of the best equipment to use in the area, especially earlier on. It There's not as like, many risk for, I guess, track marks right being disrupted because you're in the air and you're looking down at the ground. Whereas if you had people on horseback, people in ATVs, small vehicles, quad bikes driving along... It, it will obviously leave track marks themselves and then it could cause confusion as to who does it belong to and what is to do with Dylan and what isn't. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they're saying the wash in the Montello area. Now, what wash is it in the Montello area? What different named ones do we have? We did look at one in the past, but I'm not quite sure as to which one that was. Um can't really remember the name, but maybe when we go on the maps, probably be able to figure it out. Okay. Tire tracks. Yeah, this is the thing. You've got to understand that the way this is worded is worded at the time, and this is very early on in the case. So if you've heard things different in recent time, when Kenny's Cooley has been talking about track marks in the wash, right? It's, it's more understandable. You know, in the early days, you only know so much. And as time goes on, you start to learn more and your opinions, your thoughts change because evidence comes on in, right? So just be wary of that. I know we have seen lots of switching and changing of information over time in the long run with Candice Cooley and others. But when looking at this post... June 8th, 2022, and comparing it to most recently, there's going to be a massive jump, right? Or there's more chances of a massive jump in differences compared to over a couple of days in things changing. Right. Where it says, though, the tyre tracks that are remarkably similar to the tyre treads of Dylan's pickup so at least at this moment, Candice Cooley isn't saying these are Dylan's 
treads. These are Dylan's track marks from his pickup. She's just simply saying they do look very similar to Dylan. Okay. Just to throw out there, was it ever fully confirmed that the track marks in the wash were of Dylan's pickup truck with 100% certainty and proof? I do remember at some point during an East Idaho News Channel interview where Candice Cooley did talk about this and said that she wants to get someone in to try and assist and need to get some uh, license plate for some kind of, um, I don't know, to be able to get the license plate with the tire treads of some sort. I don't know how the hell that works, but I don't know if it ever followed through, if it ever worked out. But if you know, feel free to list it down below. Hmm. And then I'm sure someone else was saying that because it was done too late, that the tyre tracks ended up fading away and they couldn't get a hold of them again. And then someone else saying that when it came to like the moulds of it, trying to get like DNA from it, it just wasn't fully complete, the track, so it wasn't that successful. All these little bits and bobs of bits and bobs of information, it's like, whoa, whoa, what the hell's this shit, you know? The really, the really thin stuff, like, just like, just like a sieve, it just passes through and it doesn't end up um, really being explained. Sometimes you might think it's probably BS, that's why it fades away quick. But we know Sunday, June 5th is when it happened, and that's when the tracks were found in the wash. Look similar to Dylan's pickup truck. Okay. Any contradictions here? And saying that possibly Sunday. Right, what? Well, these tracks are clearly visible in the wash on the video and were clearly made after the rain. The reason why you'd say after the rain is for those track marks to be left in the ground, right? It makes sense. It rains, ground becomes wet, moist, okay, maybe a bit saturated. You drive over it, then it'll leave an imprint in. And then if it dries up, the ground hardens and then it's like a cast almost. So I understand that. What we also need to understand, it did rain fairly heavy on Saturday. I don't know how long for and whether it was throughout the day. It was in the morning time, it raining heavy. And then it was talked about that on Sunday as well, it rained, right? So Candice Cooley is assuming at this moment back then that the pickup truck must have been used on a Sunday because on Saturday it rained, so the ground would have been wet. And then on Sunday, driving over it. Hmm. But, as we've heard more so in recent time, Candice Cooley has kind of changed with that idea, saying that Dylan was murdered and lightly buried all on the same day, the 28th. Now, does that throw out the whole talk about track marks being left behind because of rain on a Sunday? Well, it does about Sunday, but look, if it rained fairly heavy in the early hours, morning time of Saturday, 28th of May, 2022, then throughout the day, the ground would have been wet, right? So if the pickup truck was used on the same day, but later on, it still would have left track marks behind. Now, if it rained on a Sunday day after, would that rain have disturbed the track marks? I don't know. The way I see it, ground gets wet, vehicles dries through, leaves track marks behind, obviously an indentation, bit of a ditch from the tracks. If it rains again, those track marks, imprints fill up with water. Does it dissolve? Does it erode? Does it wash away those marks? It might, to an extent, it might get rid of a bit of the definition of the tyre tread, but the imprint, the lines, will still be there, roughly speaking, right? And it must be, because the video does show it, and I said we'll get to that in a second. Anything else here we need to read? Just a bit where it goes on then to say that, please remember that the pickup had been pressure washed when found part at the farm. So at this moment, Candice Cooley is 100% confident as if it's a fact that Dylan's pickup truck was pressure washed. Because she's saying that had been pressure washed. It had. No question. Is that really true? 
the only thing that causes a bit of confusion, and it is a valid point to be made, is why are there track marks at a wash area, which could be of Dylan's pickup, but there are no track marks at Dylan's farm to suggest that that vehicle was moved on the same day or near to it. Does that make sense? Why in one area are the track marks, but in the other area there aren't? And in the area there aren't, that's where the truck originated from. So for that truck to get from here to over there for track marks to occur, then why is there no track marks at the starting point coming or going? That's what I don't understand, right? Is there any way around it possibly? The only way I could think of it would be the pickup truck was used on a day where it wasn't wet or at a time in the day where it wasn't wet so there was no track marks left behind. Then it was taken out at a time when it was wet, let's say, uh, it sounds a bit weird, left the track marks behind, and then the vehicle was returned back at a time when there was no wetness. But that, would, that would mean and suggest that Dylan's pickup truck was away from the farm for a day or two. That doesn't quite make any sense. Let me know your thoughts, right? We'll do a poll right now. The idea that there are track marks at a wash, in a wash, which belong to Dylan's pickup truck, or supposedly do. If that's the case, then why is there no track marks at Dylan's farm, considering the truck was returned back to the area if it was used? Do you think, poll options, that Dylan's pickup truck was used or not? Bit of a basic poll, to be honest, but it's kind of hard to really put into words, right? I mean, there's like clues, suggestions to say that the pickup truck was pressure washed, I guess. And, you know, you could say, well, how do you know? I mean, just like when you look at the sides of the pickup truck, the way it looks like things have washed away, how on the ground it looks like there's clumps that have collected, looks a bit dampish as well, few possible footprints too you know you could say it was pressure washed but i guess the other thing to acknowledge is if if it's only water water is needed for dirt to be washed away you don't have to rely on a pressure washer you can just rely on natural rainwater and considering we've heard saturday sunday of may 2022 it did rain on the 28th and 29th then if Dylan's pickup truck parked up stationary at Dylan's farm. That rain, especially if it's heavy rainfall, would have, you know, hit against Dylan's pickup truck and pushed some of the dirt off. And that would explain to why um, underneath the wheel, well, uh, the wheel tread, that area, why there was clumps of mud still there. Because when it rains, rain falls from above, not underneath. So that's why the, the wheels weren't cleaned in that sense. At the time, the idea was that, oh, someone pressure washed, power washed Dylan's pickup truck and forgot to do underneath the, the wheels in that area. I mean, it's still a possibility, right? But in terms of the fact that it did rain on Saturday and Sunday, that seems more likely. What I would say is, though, if on the conditions and it's very unlikely, but I'm just saying it as an alternative reality. If on, this, if on Saturday and Sunday, 28th, 29th of May, it did not rain whatsoever, but the pickup truck looked somewhat clean or dirt trickling off and collecting on the ground, then you could say, and it could be reinforced by it was definitely pressure washed, right? But because of natural rain, that seems more likely. And as well, the truck itself still looked pretty dirty. People were saying it's very clean. You must be blind. You see all skid marks and streaks of dirt dropping down. That's definitely not a good job. Sure, it'll be a bit dusty because that's just like fighting a losing battle if you're in the desert and you've got a vehicle out there. It's going to get dirty quickly once again. Even if you did a really good clean of a vehicle and parked it up in the desert, it's just going to get a, a layer a coating of dust and a bit of dirt, right? Not as much as if you used to drive into a wash or something like that, but it's still going to collect dirt. But in terms of like under the wheel, actual clumps of mud and dirt and shit like that, 
Yeah. Now, you think about it, just something random, the back hoe. Back hoe of Kurt at the Grain Shed property. That has dirt on as well, around the tyres, dried mud on the bucket area and the front scoop too. And it's like, okay, we've heard that it's been used for certain jobs, right, around the time of Dylan going missing and it's supposedly been used in helping trying to look for Dylan too, okay. So you get an idea of how dirty things can get when used in certain environments. Can you apply that to Dylan's pickup truck? Possibly. Um, but I'm just still confused as to how supposedly Dylan's tracks could end up over there in Montello, a wash, but for there not to be any track marks at the farm. So what? Dylan's pickup truck teleported over there, drove about to leave marks, and then it teleported back without leaving any traces. That's what's a little bit hard to try and understand. Unless, for some weird reason, that those track marks in a wash were of Dylan's truck, but a couple of days before he went missing, if he was coming back from somewhere, right? Mm. Is there anything else to mention here? The wash was searched on the Utah side. We do need to get search dogs out there as the size of the wash slough off with the slightest movement. Right, so at the time, Candice Cooley needed search dogs, cadaver dogs. But I heard Indiana say that Candice Cooley had bloodhounds or she raised or she trained bloodhounds or something. If that is true, then why did she not use them instead? Can anyone clear that up or clear the BS or reinforce it? Feel free. Anything else? If someone has a connection that can help us get some cadaver dogs to the area to search, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, Lance Kelly, a few months ago, said in his own video that he helped and assisted Candice Cooley in the early days when in Montello area. Um, Lance said that he need um, No... Candice Cooley said at the time that she needed the dogs. Lance Kelly said that he can offer that. And I was thinking, wait, that doesn't make any sense. If Lance Kelly had dogs back then and he said that he used them and helped Candice Cooley when looking in the Montello wash, that's exactly what he said not long ago when talking about the past. Then why does Lance Kelly need to have money raised to be able to get his own cadaver dog if you if he was using a cadaver dog way back then i don't understand that does anyone else was lance kelly um let's just read this part again so can he's at the time needed help to get cadaver dogs to the area to search right okay we are more than happy to pay for the services of the dog handlers. Oh, hold on. Hold on. So, from the looks of it, they had the dogs at the time, but they didn't have anyone to handle the dogs or transport them to the area. Okay. So, I can understand that. If at the time, Lance Kelly getting involved in the early days, he didn't have a cadaver dog, but he helped assist whilst handling a cadaver dog at the time, though Lance didn't have any training. So how did he how did he get into it? How was he accepted? I don't understand. But yeah, that happened. And then fast forward a year on, almost, and then um, more recently, Lance wants, you know, a cadaver dog himself. Right. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it kind of ties in line with what Lance said back then about assisting Candice Cooley with handling cadaver dogs in the early days. we have been in the early days, Candice Cooley didn't have a negative outlook towards Lance because it was very early on and it was during the volunteering and assistance. So really, I guess maybe Candice Cooley um, appreciated Lance at the time, but then with time, things turned sour. Hmm. Okay. 
So did Lance Kelly get paid by Candice Cooley then? Because Candice Cooley says here at the time, we are more than happy to pay for the services of the dog handlers. Now, if Lance Kelly was a dog handler back then in the Montello Wash area, did Candice Cooley pay him? Does anyone know? There's some very interesting points, these, especially with the early days and recalling with what I've heard with time. Yeah, because, you know, if that talk, you know, the talk is, oh, the early days are critical, the usage of cadaver dogs is necessary in the early days, if things weren't delayed, if things weren't de denied, then we probably would have found Dylan by now. That's what's been said several times by Candice Cooley, right? Um, Jim Terry's got his own words saying if I was involved more so at the start, then we would have found Dylan by now. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if that's really the case, then if it did truly happen, these cadaver dogs were used at a wash in Montello, you know, what was the issue there? If they were used early on. If they used early on, then they used early on. But I thought Candice Cooley said there was no cadaver dogs used whatsoever in the early days. And that really the only time when cadaver dogs were used was like truly used, was 2022 before winter time. You get what I'm saying? That's at least how I've heard it. Mm. There's a lot to um take notes from this. Yeah. What's this? We're asking for the... Okay. So this video doesn't seem to fit on screen, so I'll just have to play that individually. With what we know now from this, let me know your thoughts down below to what you think about it. I'm going to play you the video right now and then see what it looks like. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the chat to what you think about the footage. Was it clear? Were you able to see the track marks? Like on screen right now, just flying on over, I could clearly see them in that spot. Cows swerving in and out the track marks. They seem to fade away a little bit. And you catch a glimpse of them once again, crossing back over, slightly lighter in colour. What I don't understand is, at this moment, why... Why did it seem like the helicopter was landing? It looked like the elevation was getting lower, hence why you saw all that dust blowing on the ground at the end of that clip. So was that helicopter landing in that spot? Does anyone know? It looked like it. But then why would you do that? Because it looked like the helicopter was literally landing on top of the track marks. Why would you do that? Wouldn't that ruin the track marks? And the question is, what I have is, in what direction was it? Were those track marks coming or going? Was it north, east, south or west, right? Supposedly in the Montello area, this wash where the helicopter was flying over. Um, the other question is, why are the track marks like so all over the place, like swerving in and out? Does anyone know? Because it does kind of like crisscross over when um, you look at the footage on repeat. It seems to be um, swerving around now onto the far right-hand side of the wash, nearer to the wall, and then it starts to bend back round and cross on over. At this moment, the wash is pretty straight going down, yet the track marks cross on over. So is it because there are rocks, bits of debris on the ground, so you've got to avoid it? I don't know. Like... Sometimes when you think of someone driving along and if they're swerving in and out of traffic, most likely they're probably in a rush, but they're also being a little bit reckless. In an area like this, yeah, you can get away with it, but still, is there a level of sense of in a rush? I mean, if you're disposing of someone, you might be, right? Depending on how you feel at the time. Is Brenner the type of guy to rush things or not? Take it in his own stride? Hmm. Just want to know your thoughts in general, though, as to what you think about these track marks. Are they of Dylan's pickup truck? And who do you think likely was the one behind the wheel 
Brenner or somebody else, right? I mean, as for DNA, did they not find any DNA on the pickup truck at all? I know on the on the grain truck, they said that there was DNA of Dylan, DNA of Brenner, and as well Don Haitley, but it wasn't conclusive. It could have been done at any point, any time, because they did share the grain truck over time. So, don't mean to say it was to do with when Dylan went missing. That's how it's worded then. But I don't think any DNA was found on Dylan's pickup truck. If that's the case, then why? Is it because it was cleaned down? The steering wheel, the gear, the clutch, was it all cleaned off any evidence? What I'm saying is, if that's truly the case, then you could interpret it as there must be another person involved. If a fair few people strongly believe that Brenner isn't the one to return the gun and key fob back, or it's somebody else, and since that gun and key fob was cleaned down, then maybe the person that cleaned down those items also cleaned down uh, Dylan's pickup truck on the inside for like prints, removing that, the traces of it. Just makes you think, hmm, very interesting, right? Let me know your thoughts about that. Is there anything else we need to look on over? I mean, just so it's a bit easier for you, maybe we can like look at a still screenshot of the track marks. Not the best in terms of closeness or quality, but just a still shot so I can point it out to you, get the best defined one and then go from there, okay? Here is one of the screenshots which I took. Now, I believe I might have even shown this in a past video of the wash, which I think Quintessential was referring to, but at that time it felt very blurry. So maybe it's a little bit clearer here. If not, at least I showed to you that footage beforehand, which wasn't too bad. But my question is, if someone, well, whether it be their helicopter or not, for someone to be in the possession of a helicopter, which is pretty high-end and somewhat costly, then why can't they afford or have a decent enough camera on board for it to document the stuff? Unless the helicopter doesn't have any cameras and someone was recording via their phone. Now, Candice Cooley herself recorded some footage in the past when she was on the property with her phone, but it was very blurry. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? It just would have been better if the quality was improved. So, whilst people may call out Ty Corbin or many, mainly Lance Kelly, the one thing you can acknowledge with them is when they record, they do have somewhat better quality footage, which is good, just on that basis. That's all I'm saying, right? But you got the wash here. At the point down there, it does go on a bend. It does bend around. It's very hard to see, but over in the distance over there are mountains. So if you know any of them, feel free to point it out if you're familiar. The track marks mainly appear first here. Can you see those two lines? Center the screen. Hopefully you can see them. They do stand out to me at least. And as you see, they swerve around. Why do they swerve around? Why not go in a straighter line? Is there a reason for that? Can anyone explain? But yeah, these are the track marks, which Candy's Cooley said look remarkably similar to um, Dylan's. And it's not really been contested since. And even when I did the last video to do the track marks in the wash, just like a brief coverage on it, no one really contested it or debunked it. So it's still, I guess, in question in general. So does that. If anyone has their own thoughts or own updates, feel free to share them in the chat if uh, you can. They'd be appreciated. Okay. Hmm. And they're going for a bit. I don't know exactly where they start or where they end. This was at the end of that little clip. Very faint, you can see them there, like little railway tracks, one on each side. Can you see? Center of the screen, like those little black lines. And then they fade away past that point. So I guess they just go onwards down there. It looks like further on to the wash, it does bend again on the right this time, further ahead. As for up here, 
Do you know, um, I can't really zoom in. Do you know top left? No, not top left. Middle of the screen on the far left side. You can see like a mountain or something. Now, is that mountain to do with near Tacoma Road going into Montello? Does anyone know? Hmm. It just makes me think that for some reason, it just makes me think that these track marks are from this screenshot are from the wash in Lucent and they continue on over that way, crossing the border into Montello. Can anyone confirm that? Just because visually looking at the direction of this wash and the way the helicopter is going in, it's like it's going in the direction as if Brenner was driving down this way and going up that way into the Montello area. My question is, why did Candice Cooley or whoever provide the footage of the wash area of the track if it's to do with in Lucin and then going into Montello? If you're saying this is in the Montello area, then, you know, what's the point looking here? And, you know, do you have a thing what I just want to highlight, kind of? Really, if you're going to be searching, then why are you going elsewhere and everywhere else? Why not just focus directly on here or this type of terrain besides all the other places? Like, I know it's good to spread out when searching. It's effective. It's worthwhile. But if you've got clues, if you've got, like, hints, you've got evidence which points in a certain direction, then why not follow it? Follow it all the way, as far as you can go, up to the point the track marks end. If the track marks end, there's a possibility that the vehicle stopped at that point. There might even be a turnabout spot, right? You'd think that would be the key location as to where Dylan could be. Right, if a truck's driving down, is it going to stop and then dispose of Dylan, then carry on driving further on up? I mean, that could be a possibility. So that's probably why Candy's Cooley said they've been searching in the Lucent area of the wash, north of the Grain Shed property, over the railroad tracks, that one. Searching all about there, but also needing to look at the Montello part of the wash. And that was back in June 8th, in the early days, right? So what, it's taken all that time to search the wash? I mean, they said they been checking other areas in between. But as I said, is there any point in checking other areas in between if you have stronger evidence to suggest this is the spot, the wash, or a wash, right? Um... What I would say is the only thing that's lacking and it's most unfortunate is they don't have that data of Dylan's pickup truck because it was lost the moment the family got a hold of the truck and were able to move it on. It lost all the 100 miles from beforehand. So if in an alternative reality you had these supposed track marks in the wash going into the Montello area of a wash from Lucin's wash all connected from the looks of it, supposedly. Uh, um, and you had the the distance of Dylan's pickup truck and that distance went in the same direction, in the same spot, the same route as those track marks and you could literally confirm it like that, right? But you've only got 50% of, like, evidence. Just a general question on the spot. These track marks, what we see on screen, these track marks, are they definitely Dylan's? Have they been solved yet? Were they traced to the final spot or did they just fade away? Anyone knows? If track marks like this are quite important, the longer time goes on until, you know, they're checked out properly, the less likely, you know, they're going to remain. It could It could fade away with time, right? I'm like, it sounds a bit silly saying that because it had been so long, June 8th, around that time. June 5th, when this was documented, of 2022. We've moved on quite a while since. But we're not going to look quite the same. Yeah. And some people in between have come and gone down there, haven't they? So could they have disturbed the tracks? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get too confused. There were track marks in a wash 
where Mob Crew Chris was at one point, but that was more to do with um, Search and Rescue being responsible. But then, and I keep forgetting the date, but later on in to the case, maybe it was around September, correct me if I'm wrong, Mob Crew Chris and someone went down to a wash area, place of interest, and found other track marks, which were very interesting. Hmm. This is what I mean. It's okay people calling out Lance Kelly for the bones, the bag of bones, the bone here, the bone in that cave, the bone in that mine shaft, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's hard to um, keep memory of which one is which and, you know, where we at with the bones. But the same could be said about the track marks, okay? Like Candice Cooley um, and then some other people coming across track marks. Which one is which? Whose track mark is who? Which one are we referring to? Same one, pre-existing, a new one. What? It's problematic, right? Is it possible to trace this wash onto the maps? Whew, I don't know. I guess we can take a brief look. I think there was a comment made by Quintessential, but unfortunately I think I deleted the screenshot, so apologies about that. I think it was passing on from what Ty Corbin said, saying the wash area appears to be southwest of the pond, so many miles away. Was it 20? We'll just have a look anyway. All right, here we are on the maps. Uh, we appear to be near Owl Spring. That's from the last video I did. As like I like to call it, Owl Springs. Lots of springs all over the place, like a bed of springs you bounce on. But we zoom on out for a second. What we need to do is focus in on loosen area. Now, as for the processing, it's taking a little bit of time, a little bit slower than usual. My question is, the helicopter that was flying down, it, it felt like it was flying down this way, coming down here with the bends, right? Though, I think one thing to acknowledge, I did say about it appeared to be over here, you could see this like mound if you was in a wash over over here somewhere but yeah the wash is further down here so how does it quite add up unless there's another wash nearby now to be honest it's a little bit blurry and pixelated in some areas it's almost as bad as dale's passport photo it's unrecognizable but it just depends where we are to begin with right are we talking about this part of the wash that helicopter was flying down? I know Candice Cooley did say about the wash area in Montello, right? I guess it just all depends on the camera angle, right? Just trying to understand that. And uh, to be fair, um, it looks like the mountain was on the left-hand side. So this stuff here, or the one over that way... Oh, God, it's flipped the bloody image. Like this area here... And it was on the left-hand side. So if you're going down the helicopter, you'd be coming up this way. If you was coming down it, it wouldn't be on the right-hand side, would it? Because the footage, what we saw, it was on the left-hand side. Unless for some... Mm, actually, there appears to be a wash here. This is a wash area. Luray Wash. And I believe this is one nearby or so where you had the 2017 floods in which the... Bridge going across ended up crumbling away. So is it Larray Wash to do with Candice Cooley saying about the track marks being there and needing someone such as Lance Kelly at the time to come on down and handle the cadaver dogs? It's in the Montello area, right? Where does Larray Wash to begin with? Well, it seems to almost approaching the Utah born. It's like somewhere down here. Like it, it was almost like it's in, in a ditch. This area. And then it bends in and out. You've got to take in mind that this is 2019 imagery. So you're going to see the vegetation, right? But you go to a different time of the season, that vegetation won't be there. Probably different in colour too. So is this the wash which the helicopter is flying down? Probably not because it's very near to the railroad tracks. Now... Take in mind, the wash does go underneath the railroad tracks, comes out the other side, because it goes underground. Don't know if you can see. And then it continues down here. Bends in and out. This is a wash. 
Now is Laray Wash the place where Dylan's tracks are? When does it end? Kind of branches out and kind of like maybe stops around here in this area. Or maybe it continues on. Kind of hard to tell, to be honest. The width of it. Oh my god, look how brown that is. Indiana, what are you doing? Um, I think this is like the whole thing. It's very wide. It's a very wide wash, if that's the case. Bloody hell. Is that because of the flooding, though? Made it wider. Some very dark patches there. Keeps on going. So maybe it's bigger than you think. From the looks of it. You like patchy areas. That's definitely filled with water from the looks of it. Is that just a lake though? Not quite sure. All these washes that open up. I think round here might have been the road that did collapse. This area here. At some point 2017. This was all filled with water. Hmm. That over there, centre of the screen, appears to be the object what we see in the flyby with that helicopter. And with it being on the left-hand side, you'd have to be coming up west, going in west the direction. Though, when I saw it, it was Tacoma Valley. Ooh, is Tacoma Valley a wash? It looks like it. Look at that one there. Don't have any photos, though. And that bends in and out. Mmm. Yeah. Comes all the way down here. Keeps on going. Very in and out. But then it, it like, splits two ways. Oh, what the hell? That Tacoma Valley ended up splitting two different ways. That's interesting. And then there appears to be another wash here. Don't know if it's the same one because I ended up getting booted off the other location I was at. Absolute knob. I think when you flip the image a certain way, it really spazzes out. It's more spasmodic than um, Graham is when he gets excited at Disneyland. Hmm. Definitely more washes. I'm seeing more washes than ever before. I must have been blessed. The blessings must have come on in because now it's revealed all of these washes. Unfortunately, they're not named, though. I don't know if we've got any maps which would reveal the names of them. Probably not. Yeah, and it's quite deep, this one. Very rigid and rugged. Bends round. And this one, I think, does it go into the Montello area? Is it one whole connecting one? Seems to come to a dead end there. Branches off down here. But then it, it kind of like fades out, so I don't know. Well, then again, you've got Luray Wash over here. I just don't know if it's two separate washes, Tacoma Valley and Luray Wash. Like, the way Candy's Cooley was wording it was like it was one whole singular wash, which goes from Lucent area to into Montello. But it could well be m many different washes, right? And, you know, I can understand why Candice Cooley hasn't named them or named the exact one because it's kind of like giving it away. It's kind of like, you know, revealing locations. So if you do have any people in the area, as we know, who might have visited at some point or another, they could end up, you know, going down there, investigating and causing a bit of mishap. You never know. There's always a possibility. There was talk, supposedly, I've not really seen it, by Lance himself, whoever it was briefly talked about in a video. But someone left a comment last night on my channel called Lee, saying that it was Lance that said, um, pointed out in his recent video that that backhoe, which he documented in Montello, parts up somewhere, is no longer around. It's disappeared all of a sudden. Is that a surprise? If that's really the case, all I would say is maybe either someone forgot about it and then was reminded by it, so they went back because of Lance's video, or it was someone else, opportunistic behaviour, right? You scout out an area, 
you record, document it, post it online. Anyone, everyone can see it. You got locals in the area watching closely. They see that video and think, oh, wow, I never knew that was down there. Let's go down. Let's check it out. Let's maybe steal it. You know what I'm saying? There's a slight possibility of that. Though when it did come to the backhoe at the grain shed property, completely exposed in the open, yet no one stole it, no one took it away. Why is that? Um, the only thing that was taken was the tools. Um, what type of tools? I'm not quite sure what type of tools it was, but, you know, it just makes you think. Kurt Wadsworth was the one that suggested it. It was Kurt's back cow. Um, at the time, Gloria Dellen's footage. When was it now? Was it August? August 21st when it occurred? August 22nd, round about then? Hmm. 2022. Yeah. Makes you think. In general, I feel there was more washes revealed in this video than any other map one I've done. And that was just simply because I was able to flip the image, get down low, and see, you know, how it ditched down into like a trench with a bit of depth, right? Because washes are fairly deep. Um, not quite able to track down the exact wash as to where the helicopter was, but maybe, you never know, accidentally, I might have brushed past it and been nearby. Um, when they talk about, who's that now, Bibbins being within Lucent area near to Sun Tunnels, maybe I've glanced past that area where he lives. Um, does it really matter? Not really, but it's just interesting how at certain points at times when you're on the maps, you could be in a certain spot of interest, but you've got no clue at the time. And then you find out down the line, right? Maybe something like that happened today. But just share your thoughts down below to what you think of it all. Do you feel it's kind of been forgotten this? Has it been debunked, cleared up and have new tracks emerged with time elsewhere let me know your thoughts because i've not really seen it debunked that part yet if you do have questions of course list them down below and maybe they can be answered as soon as possible and just share just general thoughts whatever right down below there's no harm keep the discussions going keep the case alive as much as possible and as much as one can and we see what happens next as for dylan round videos i don't think I need to cover any of us at this moment in time. I don't have any on the notepad right now. As I said, I've got some Kenny Veach ones, so it's probably best to get on with them. And you never know, something else might happen in between. As for predictions, I can't really give any predictions at this moment because there isn't really any more to give, but we'll see what the pre-existing ones are and how they go themselves. If you do have ideas or maybe certain suggestions of possible Dylan Rounds videos, coverage of a particular area, feel free to list it down below because I have done a few viewer requested videos and they've turned out fairly well. So maybe we can keep up with that in between. And yeah, I think we'll leave it there for now. As for this video, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. For now, goodbye and good night.